bringing hope, equipping lives, affecting destiny. Hello, he has done. My very soul. Oh, shall I 
I give us with the Lord for all his benefit towards me. I will raise the cup of salvation and I will say thank you to my God. I will say thank you to God this morning. This is the month of November. God has been good. God is faithful. God is good. From the beginning of the year till now, in my own life, so many waters have shown under the bridge. But God is good. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. I so thank God for your life. Thank God for your loved ones. Thank God for your family. Thank you for this golden arena. Father, we thank you. Lord, you are worthy this morning. Lord, you are worthy this morning. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor for all that you have done for us. Lord, we bless you. For January through February, into March, into April, into May, Lord, we say thank you. In June, we bless you. In July, we give you glory. For August, for September, for October, even for November, even for December, and for the years ahead of us. Father, we bless you. We say you are good. Thank you, everlasting Father. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, Lord, for the message that we receive that are new every morning. Thank you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the past. Thank you for the present. We can bless you for the future because you are good unto us. Let's bless your name, our God. In Jesus' precious name, we are given thanks. Alagbara, you are the mighty God. Enila to be you are the glory of
show the mightiness of his power over your life. I want you to turn that song to prayer. Even as, as the choir goes up to sing that song every night, begin to declare the, the power of God by your situation and say, Father, manifest your power over my situation. I don't know that situation, but God is ready to manifest this power this morning. In the name of God, God, you are ever manifest your power. over our circumstances and over our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, you are the most powerful God. You are a glorious God. There is nothing you cannot do. With you all things are possible and that is why you are called Jehovah. Whatever you say you will do, that is exactly what you will do. And you said in this place this morning, oh God, you are going to manifest your power in the life of your people. Lord, go ahead and manifest your power. Go and go ahead and do what you are supposed to do. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we give you praise. As we go into your work this morning, Holy Spirit, we ask that you will speak to us expressly, both the speaker and the air. You will send your word into our situation. In this place this morning, let there be deliverance. Oh God, let there be salvation of souls, let there be restoration, oh God, let your word locate every one of us in our places of need through your word this morning. Let there be healing in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Let your word not return to you void this morning. Holy Spirit divine, we give you full control. We lay aside every agenda of men that will have your place in this place. Let the entrance of your word this morning, let it give understanding to our simple hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your name, God. In Jesus' precious name, we are prayed. Amen. And people of God say, Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's have our seats. Choir, thank you. God bless you. God will continue to increase you from one level of glory to another. Praise the Lord. You are welcome into the church this morning. You are welcome into this presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The Lord that is great and mighty in battle. What a wonderful privilege. Each time we have to share the word of God is a privilege. And each time we have, we have the opportunity to listen to the word of God is a privilege. Nothing is automatic. And we don't have any sense of entitlement. It's all by the grace of God. So, Father, this morning we say thank you. If you are glad to be in God's presence this morning, give him a shout. Hallelujah. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. And at times I look at that scripture and I ask myself, What makes him glad? Because it's a man like you and I. And they have so many issues. Maybe it's even his issue is even more than mine. But yet, he says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Because the presence of the Lord is the place where you come and you leave your burdens, you leave your troubles, you leave your worries, and you exchange every ashes for beauty. You, you, you exchange every worriness for joy because we have a body bearer we have a body bearer in christ and that is why we are always glad when we said let's go into the house of the lord so this morning father we are glad again to be in your presence this morning i will be sharing with you what i have titled choosing the right path choosing the right path and when you hear that title Two things easily occur to you. One, there is a choice. Number two, there is something wrong. Because if there is no right, if there is no wrong, 
there won't be right. He could have just been saying, choose the path. But when he says, choosing the right path, it means there are certain things that we need to think about. So by the way of introduction, we are all familiar with what a path is, but I put it down. A path is a way or track laid down for walking or a course of action or ways of achieving a specific result. So a path that has been laid down for walking, we refer to it as a path. A specific action or way that was laid down to achieve a specific result, we call it a path. So a right path can then be referred to a course or a way that guarantees your destination. A path or a way that guarantees your destination. And as I said, that connotes there are two things we have to do. We have to make a choice. And also, we need to know that there is a wrong path. There is a wrong path. This choice that you made will determine the outcome. And the path you take will spell out your destination. No matter your dream, no matter your wish, no matter your aspiration, it is your choice that will determine your destination. For example, if someone dreams to be a doctor or wish to be a doctor, after the A-level results, he went to university to go and study law. Either he likes it or not, after completing that course, if he's, if he's going to practice at all, he's going to practice as a lawyer. No matter how much he prayed about be, dreaming of being a doctor, no matter how he wished to be a doctor, except he decided to go back and study medicine, that dream can never be fulfilled. So, there is always a path to choose to be able to get to our destination. We all woke up this morning and we decided to be in church. And that is why you are here listening to me. And if you, are, if you don't make that decision, you will not be here. So every decision has their consequence. And we are responsible for every decision that we make in life. So we make choice from different options. If there are no options, there won't be choices. It's because there are choices. That's why we have to make options. If it's just only one way or only one choice, there is, no, there is no reason for choice. Everybody has to fall in line. But God is not like that. He has given us a will and has given us choices. So we have choices. But despite the fact that there are, there, there are choices to make, there are things to consider before we make those um, choices. God is always there to help us in our journey, but we have our will to be able to yield to those desired results. Without it, it will not happen. There are so many cautions along the way in when, we, when we are making choices. So this morning, we are going to be looking at the topic, choosing the right path. Many of us, we want to be very sure of our destination. We want to be sure that the path that we are taking will lead us to where we want to go, even before we start that journey. Who doesn't like that? Everybody likes it. I want to go this way, and I'm sure that this way I am taking is going to lead me to where I want to go. Who can make that happen? Only God. Only God. But it is possible. That is why Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21 says, Your own ears, I'm reading from the NLT, Your own ears will hear in right behind you a voice would say, This is the way you should go, whether to the right or to the left. So if the voice of God is saying to you, This is the way you should go, you can be too sure. That your destination is certain. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 12. Only God's voice of direction guaranteed the destination of a person. I say that again. Only the God voice of direction guarantees your destination. 
and when God will speak, that voice that will guarantee your destination, you have to obey. It requires you to surrender and to obey. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Seek Him in all you do, and He will show you the path to take. He will show you the path to take. So, choosing the right path means to decide on to take a path that pleases and honors God. Choosing a right path means to decide because you can decide to do something and you may not do it. So you will need to decide, you will need to take it on, you will need to do it, a path that pleases God, that honors God, that glorifies God. When you choose a path that pleases God, it will then lighten it up as you go. That is why Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When you choose a path that honors God, that pleases God, that glorifies God, God is committed to lighting that path. So our test for this morning is taken from the book of Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, we will read from verse 14 to 19. Proverbs chapter 4. Fourteen to nineteen. Do not do, don't do as the wicked do. Don't follow the path of evil doers. Don't think about it. Don't go that way. Turn away and keep moving. For evil people can't sleep until they've done their evil deeds for the day. They can't rest until they have caused someone to stumble. They eat the, fru the food of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The way of the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. Verse 19. But the way of the wicked is like total darkness. They have no idea of what they are stumbling over. Let's quickly read it from the NKJV. Verse 14. Do not enter the path of the wicked. Do not walk in the ways of evil. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass on. For they do not sleep until they have done evil. And their sleep is taken away unless they have made someone fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is like the shining sun that shines brighter unto the perfect day. The day of the wicked, the way of the wicked, is like darkness. They do not know what made them stumble. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. When we go through this um, passage, it talks about the wicked and the righteous. But our focus this morning is on the righteous, not on the wicked. Because both the wicked and the righteous make choices. But by the mercy of the Lord, we have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus, if you are genuinely born again. But with that, we make choices. And that is why we want to focus on ourselves. We want to focus on the righteous. The way of the righteous and the way of the sinner, there are two different ways. There are two different ways. They have nothing in common at all. The way of the just is a desire of God for the children of God, for his own children. 
the way of the wicked and the way of and the part of the wicked and the part i will be using both interchangeably both the way and the part so the part of the wicked are the part of the righteous they are not the same they are two parallel lines that cannot meet and so that is why we need to know but the scripture says the way of the just shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day so as a child of god god wants our way to shine brighter and brighter because it's the one that lightens our path the, that's why I read that Psalm, 1, Psalm 119, verse 105, that your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So as a child of God, that is a path that God desires for you. It is referred to as the path of the just. And it has its characteristics. A path of the just. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. As we look into it, the path of the just. The path of the just. But 7 13 to 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. But narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who found it. It's a passage that we all know. So, the way, the path, there are two parts. One is so wild and it's so comfortable. It's so enjoyable, in quote. And so many found it. It takes all kinds of people, both the young and the old, the big and the small, with their luggages, with their loads, with everything, because it's so wide. But the other one is so narrow that it demands discipline. So to say, it's very hard, in quotes now. And you will need to drop many things to be able to pass through it. And that is why it is referred to as difficult. Many things that we need to take along in the journey of our life. Many things that we enjoy to do, this narrow road cannot accommodate it. And that is why only very few found it. That wide road that can that doesn't have that doesn't that doesn't demand much from you. Everything you want to do, you have you are in control of your life. That road is there. It accommodates anything. But this narrow road. It's a road of surrender. You are not in charge. You and I know that it's not easy to give the control of your life to somebody else. And that is why it's, it is called difficult. But the path that God desires for us is called the just, the path of the just. I am glad to let you know that if you are genuinely born again, you already found that narrow road. But in that narrow road, you have to make decisions every day because it is narrow you cannot afford to take so many things even if you like to there is no space for it there is no space for it you need to walk through that road on daily basis today many of us children of god we found that road we enter into it but we are going nowhere we are going nowhere it's just like you want to drive a car and you get into your car, you start the engine and you sit down there. Except you accelerate, that car will not go anywhere. So that is our Christian journey. So when we give our life to Jesus, we sit in that car and we are ready to go. But the decision that we make on day to day as we live determines where exactly we want to go. You have to decide either to the right or to the left, or you want to go straight ahead. With the decision that you are making will decide, will, will determine where exactly you are going. So as we look at, into this passage this morning, we are going to look at the, at the life of a man of God that will always, we, we, we always castigate as not a very good example 
But we know that by nature, human beings, we are judgmental. We are quick to see other people's faults. We are quick to see what others are not doing right. But this morning, I want you to look at yourself in the mirror of the word of God. Keep that passage at the back of your mind and follow me as we go in this message. We want to look at the life of Jonah. We always refer to him as a disobedient prophet. But do you know that that is the life of many of us as children of God? Jonah is a child of God. And if you are going to look at it in today's context, he's a born again. He's even a prophet. He hears God. If he's, if he's a wicked person, God will not speak to him. God will not send him on an errand. No. He's a child of God. It's like you and I. So many of us we are like Jonah in our Christian journey. So, let's go into the book of Jonah. And we are going to be reading from chapter 1. We read 1 to 4. Now, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it for their wickedness has come up before me but Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord he went down to Joppa found a ship going to Tarshish so he paid the fare and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Here we found, I'm sure we know the story even more than I do. And many of us, even our kids, they can quickly summarize the story from chapter 1 to chapter 4. But this child of God, like you and I, God sends him on an errand to go somewhere and he decided to go the other way. Number one, he chose the wrong path. How many times do you and I choose the wrong path? Since the beginning of the year, so many situations, can we begin to look into our lives? How many times has God spoken to you and you decided not to go that way because it doesn't make sense because you can't reason it out because it's not the way you want to go but mind you choosing the right path is a function of surrendering it's a function of you surrendering your will to god and doing whatever he asks you to do in these four verses we we'll quickly go through it he had the word of god Go to Nineveh, but he headed to Tashish. But thank God, at the end of it, he found repentance. But let's let's go one after the other. Then when he entered into that ship, I will paraphrase some verses. He paid the fare and he went to sleep. And I'm thinking, what other city? God sent you somewhere. You go another way and you went to sleep. If I'm in that situation, you know in those days when you did something wrong, you, you, you will not be at peace. You are, you'll be so afraid in case they found you out and you will, you will have to be on your toes in case. But they sent you somewhere, you went another way, then you went to go and sleep. You know, I was thinking, you, are, you must be a very bold person. If God sent you somewhere and you did not go there and you have the audacity to go and sleep and you are not even afraid, how God will find you out. So this guy went to sleep and in the process of things, God decided 
to show him his greatness. God decided to show him his greatness. So many things begin to happen to that sheep. The scripture said there was a great storm. There was a great storm. And everybody in that sheep, they were so afraid. They were praying. Everybody was doing what they knew how to do. And I want to believe that even in that sheep, as there are wicked, there are saints. How many of you have been in a, on a plane and they are giving you something like, we are entering into a very difficult situation, into a, very into a stormy environment. You know, even if you are praying, you will be at a lot. Yes, that is the truth of the matter. If, even if you are 99 and you're dead, you, you want to go, you will not want to die. Who wants to die? Nobody. You will be at a lot. So everybody in that ship, they were at a lot, except this prophet. And you would think that most times, that's this is my thought, that as a child of God, your presence in a, situa in a situation should give people around you peace and comfort. That it's not that your presence should bring tumult into their life. But because Jonah chose a wrong path, his presence in that ship brought tum tumult into the life of the co-passengers. So they started doing everything they knew how to do. Nothing works. They lost so many things. They needed to go and wake um, Jonah up at the end of the day. That's, oh God, what's going on here? Everybody is afraid. This is happening. You are sleeping. And he woke up. And when they confronted him, he confessed. And something, something interests me in that passage. And that is verse 8. Verse 8. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is this trouble upon us? What is your occupation? Where do you come from? Where is your country? And of what people are you? So he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord God of heaven, who made the heavens and the dry land. Do you know that is confession of you and I? And I was like, you fear God of heaven. He sent you to Nineveh, and you come to Tashish. And yet, you have the confidence to say you fear God of heaven. If you fear him truly, you will go where he sent you. But you know that is my life and your life. We profess to be a child of God. We profess to be born again. And we tell people around that we are Christians. We are members of the Jim Christian Church of God. I am born again. But yet, our life is contrary. Our day-to-day -day life is in the opposite direction. Choosing the right path. So one thing leads to the other. God is merciful. He found repentance and God gave him another chance. I'm just paraphrasing the story. I'm, I'm sure you know it. So God gave him another chance. This morning, God is telling me that there is a second chance for somebody. All those opportunities that you've lost in the course of the year, there is a second chance this morning. So this guy was thrown into the sea. He was there three, and God commanded a big whale to swallow him up. And he was there for three days and three nights. And after three days, God decided that the fish should vomit him out into where God wants him to, God wants him to go originally. And you see the, the awesomeness of God. So when God gives you a choice, when God gives you a chance and a choice, it's not because he cannot force you to do what he wants you to do. No. It's just in his mercy and in his compassion. And because of that relationship of a father and his son. And, and that's why the scripture says, it's not that God is lack in all his promises, but it is long, it's long suffering towards you and I. God can do anything. 
but every opportunity that God has given us is showing the mightiness and the awesomeness of God. is long-suffering towards us. And that is why we always think that there are so many wicked people in the world. There are so many wickedness. Why can't God just come and just destroy everyone? God will not do that. That is human nature. And that is what exactly what Jonah wanted. That he doesn't want him to obey God. But let's go back to our story. Choosing the right path. What do we need to learn from this story? Number one, Nineveh represents the mind of God for you. It represents the mind of God for you. The right path that God wants to go through. The right path that God has chosen for you. Though God commanded Jonah to go, Jonah has the will either to go or not to go. The same thing with you and I. Nineveh represents the mind of God for you and I. Yet it is the mind of God, but we must choose to go. We must choose to follow. God will not force you and he will not force me. He has given us that will and he will always respect that will. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 25 it says but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self control against such there is no law and those who are Christ you and I have crucified the flesh with his passion if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Tell your neighbor, if you live in the spirit, walk in the spirit. Meaning that we must choose the path of the spirit every day. We must choose the path of the spirit. That path is represent the path of righteousness. The path of love and forgiveness, the path of humility, the path of wisdom, the path of gentleness, the path of self-control, the mind of God for you and I. God is, has called us, we learned in Sunday school this morning, to himself, to a relationship with himself. He wants us to walk with him. Every day's choice you be such that pleases God. A child of God whose life works in the contrary to the will and the mind of God <coughs> cannot enjoy the benefit of salvation, cannot enjoy the benefit of redemption. So, the practicality of things. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh because it has to do with relationship of those people with God. He knew at the end of that um, book in chapter 4, he said when God forgave, when the people of Nineveh repented and God forgave their sin, he was very angry. He said, you know that, why, 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 that's why I don't want to go. Because I know that once they repented, you will give them, you will forgive them, and you will let them go. And he doesn't want them to let them go. Do you know that many of us, that is the way we live our life. We hold people in unforgiveness. We hold people in grudge. We hold them in bitterness. Once you do that, we are not choosing the right path. The right path that God wants us to go is a path of righteousness. A, a path that lets go. A path of holiness. A path of love and forgiveness. You choose love over hatred. You choose forgiveness over bitterness. Yes, you are justified to be angry. If you decided not to, not to forgive that person, you may be justified in court according to human flesh. But is that the right path for you as a child of God? Is that the right path that God wants you to follow? Is that the Nineveh that God sent you? The answer is no. A right path. Is a right, it's a path that pleases God. 
is a part that works in the spirit that works in the spirit not just live in the spirit not just that i have given my life and the holy spirit is resident in me are you working in the spirit day by day as a child of god chosen the right path the path of peace the path of gentleness the path of joy despite and in spite of life experiences choosing the right path this morning I want you to begin to look into your life why am I where I am is it because can it be because I have chosen a wrong path at times we try to explain things out but a part of wisdom calls for us to look at our situation vis-a-vis -vis the word of God. Yes, it's not every it's not every issue that is as a, a result of sin. But most times they are traceable to things that we ought to do that we do not do, or things that we neglect one way or the other where we've reasoned things out where we think it doesn't really make sense where we think that we are wise where we think that we are justified to do whatever we want to do because the Bible says when our obedience is complete we are ready to punish every disobedience so when we choose the right path and we work with God God is ready to fight our battle and to condemn every disobedience. Number two, part the, be part of number one. Tashish represents your sinful nature, your sinful desire. According to Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, the work of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, Lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, outburst of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murderers, drunkenness, rivalry, and the likes, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Those who practice such things. You know that when we look at the work of the flesh and we look at this passage, we are especially we that <coughs> born again children of God, we are quick to give ourselves a pass mark. I'm not an adulterer. I don't fornicate. I am not an adulterer, adulter, adultery person. I worship God and God alone. I'm not a witch. I'm not a wizard. I don't do all those things. So I am not in that category. But what about hatred? What about jealousy? What about outburst of wrath? What about envy? All those subtle, subtle things. As God is concerned, you born again child of God that is living in envy and anger and outburst of wrath, all those things. And that person that is a murderer, you are both sinners. You are both sinners. And it will be sad that the yardstick <laughs> for a wizard and for murderers will always be a yardstick. For a born again child of God, God forbid, that will not be my portion. And I pray that that will not be your portion. But there is a very thin line so that we don't live in self righteousness. And we think that because I am not this, I am not that, I am righteous. We are learning in Sunday school this morning that we cannot continue in sin and ask grace to abound. There is no big sin, there is no small sin. God wants us to be holy. God wants us to live right and choose that path. You've come to faith. 
choose to walk in the right path. Number two, the word of God came to Jonah personally. Personally. Yet, he didn't obey. The word of God came to Jonah personally and yet, he did not obey. We may be thinking, what other city? Yet, you said you fear God. But to know that you and I we do the same thing. We'll be thinking, ah, I don't hear God personally. So God cannot hold it against me. What about the word that you hear from this pulpit every Sunday? What about the word that you hear from the pages of the Bible from time to time? God will not jump down to come and speak to anybody. God speaks to every one of us every day. Tell your neighbor, God speaks to you. And God is still speaking to you. He's speaking to you right now. Are you listening? So when you are listening to God, it is not enough to listen. It is important to do. The book of James 1.22 It says, don't be hearers of the word alone so that you don't deceive yourself. You read your Bible. You listen to sermons. Either you are listening online or you are listening physically. Whichever way the word of God comes to you, it is God's word. What do you do with all those words that you are hearing? What do you do with the words of God every time that you hear? If you think that God is not speaking to you, or that the word that you are hearing, they are words of men, you may be living in self-denial. Because the scripture says, once God has spoken, twice I've heard that power belongs to God. For those of us that are in Sunday school, you will know that you've had part of this message in the Sunday school this morning. So God is always speaking to us and is always looking for avenue to speak to us. So you cannot say God is not speaking to you, except you are not listening. Even in situation around you, God will speak to you. Only if you are listening. If you don't listen, you will not hear. In circumstances around you, God is speaking to you. In your day-to-day -day activity, God is speaking to you. It's only once in a while that you find a sudden moment that God will just speak to you from blues. Most of the times, it's through the activities of the day. Once you have read your scripture, God will speak to you throughout the whole day. What do you do with the word of God? Do you behave like Jonah? You just set it aside, you reason it out, and you think that it's not fantastic. It's not the way I want to go. And you justify the reason not to obey. Your decision, you will be responsible for your decision. Many of us are praying and we are asking, God use me. Take me to the next level. Lord, I am ready for you. What have you done with the first instruction? Except you act on the first instruction, God is not going to give you another one. No matter how you pray, no matter how you fast, He's not going to give you another instruction. You're working with God and your progress with God is a function of your obedience to His word. Are you ready to obey God's word? Choosing the right path, right of obedience, the path of obedience, that you do not go in the wrong direction. Number three, your decision is personal, but the consequences are not. Your decision is very personal, but the consequences, they are not. Jonah took that decision by himself. Nobody was there to disobey God. He even went to sleep and joined himself until God is ready for him, was ready for him. But his journey made the suffer part of those consequences. The scripture makes us to realize that when the storm arose, they were trying everything 
to keep the ship afloat. Nothing works. I want to imagine their business people. They started throwing everything into the sea just to make sure that the ship, just to make it light so that they can keep it afloat and save their soul. So many financial losses. So many financial losses. The same way in our lives. When we don't choose the right path, people around us suffer part of those consequences. Remember the life of Achan. He decided to disobey God, to steal the accursed things. All his family members went with the consequence. The wife, the children, and everybody in his household. Many times you may be thinking, I'm a single person, I don't have anybody. There are so many people around you, not even your family alone, that will suffer those consequences. People that God has appointed with you, you're supposed to be a helper of destiny to somebody. When you are walking in disobedience, you will delay their destiny. You will delay them, or you will even deny them. There are so many destiny that are tied to us individually, outside of our family. Our families are standard. But there are so many lives that are tied to us that because of those things, we cannot, we cannot afford to choose the wrong path. We must always choose the right path so that people that arrange us will not suffer the casualty. When you choose the wrong path, it is too costly. It is too costly. You risk God's anger. It opens you at it opens you to an attack of the enemy, and it gives the enemy a platform to stand against you, even before God. As he stood against Joshua the high priest. Says, look at him. He's, he's, he's full of, he's wearing a fleeting garment. But thank God for the mercy of God. The blood of Jesus that gave us that access. So you cannot afford to choose the wrong path. Number four, discipline and the act of repentance. God decided to discipline Jonah for three days and three nights and eventually repented. Many times we don't embrace discipline, children of God. And that is what is lacking in the body of Christ today. Even when we are doing something wrong, people around us cannot tell us that they are being careful. I don't, I just want, I was asking somebody in the course of the week, he was just laughing as I was going on with you. He said, mommy, I read my Bible, I drink my water, and I mind my business. <laughs> he said, I'm, I said, what do you mean? Ah, he said, I don't get involved in anybody's matter any, any longer. I'll read your Bible, drink my water, and mind my business. Because we have pushed ourselves to that level. Because when a brother is doing something wrong or a sister is doing something wrong, nobody has the nobody has the audacity. Even your pastors have not the audacity, or your spiritual leader, or your house or house leader, or anybody in your group to call you to order. They are afraid so that you don't misinterpret their intention. They are afraid so that you don't leave the church. They are afraid so that you don't do this. You are afraid so you don't do that. But the scripture tells us that all scripture. It's written by the inspiration of God. They are good for correction. They are good for inspiration. They are good for instruction in righteousness. If there is anything that we don't use scripture for anymore, we don't use it to correct. Everybody minds their business so that nobody gets angry. God will not jump down to come and correct us. It is through this word. So it is in our place to embrace 
discipline. If we embrace discipline, people around us will be free to correct us when we need to be corrected. Even kids, I've seen kids that the, their teacher will say, mm -mm, I don't want to correct them, their parents will not like it. I don't want to step on anybody's toes. That is not a good part. That is not a good part. Where we came from, correcting a child is a community issue. It's not about your parents alone. We may think it is good old days, but if it is good for Paul and Silas, the scripture says, it is good for me. If that religion is still good for them, then it is still good now. And that is why we find children doing all kinds of things. And parents don't really know what their kids are doing. And people that can see what they are doing, they don't have the boldness to tell their parents. Chosen the right path. Let's embrace discipline and be quick to repent. Be quick to repent. When something is when somebody points something to you that it is wrong, sit down and look into it. If you don't listen to men, you won't listen to God. The scripture says, if you don't, you if you cannot love the people that you see, how can you love God? If God is sending somebody and you are not listening, how would the Holy Spirit be able to speak to you? God can speak to you through anybody. We learned in the Bible in Sunday school this morning that it is important that you know God for yourself. So when you know God, the Holy Spirit will speak to you. When you are going in the right direction, He will correct you and you will know that this is the right way to go. And if God is sending somebody to you to correct you, you will be able to know and to verify that indeed God is speaking to me. It is important. So when Jonah found repentance, because he, God disciplined him, he found genuine repentance. He repented and he went to God in prayer. Jonah chapter 2 verse 2. He cried to God. He even said from the depth of the fish, he started crying to God. You know? So, whatever situation we are, we must embrace the ministry of prayer. We must pray. It is, it is by, the, it's by the power of prayer that we can stand and keep growing. It's just like two words, two legs on which you stand. The word of God and prayer. There is no way, if you don't pray, there is no way that you will make a success of your Christian life. And the devil too knows. And that is why many of us, we find it difficult to pray. We find it extremely difficult to pray. But Jesus said, men ought to pray and not to faint. Men ought to pray. Nothing should make you faint in the place of prayer. So as you pray, then you give God the platform to intervene in your situation. Number five, Jonah arose and went. No, he didn't, he didn't like the outcome, but he had no choice. He went and preached to the people of Nineveh. And they found repentance. And I begin to wonder, as a, as a man of God, as a prophet, as a child of God, why won't you be glad that the whole city repented and talked to God? The heart of men. Selfishness. You may be thinking that is Jonah. Is that not you? Is that not me? No, you're, you you're, just may not be about somebody giving their life to Jesus. But what about other things that just you are just very selfish about? It is time for us, every one of us, to arise and choose the right path. Go in the right direction, in those directions that glorify God. Jeremiah 16, chapter 6, verse 16, as we begin to round up. He says, stand in the way, see and ask for the old path, where the good way is, and walk in it, then you will find rest for your soul. It is in choosing right that you find rest for your soul. The old path is in living the scripture. When you live in the word, you find rest for your soul. 
despite the things around you. God said to Abraham, leave and go. And he left. He didn't even know where he's going. And he left. That was Abraham. And you and you see, when I was when I was preparing this message, I was thinking about so many things. You know that sometimes we look at unbelievers and we think that why is things working for them? But you know that there are so many unbelievers, though they are not born again, but they do things that are pleasing to God. And because they do things that are pleasing to God, they have reward for their deeds. They have reward for their deeds because God is not mocked. They give, so they were blessed. They show kindness, they are good to people, and God showed them mercy. God said to Abraham, go, it's not a prophet yet. And this is a prophet that fears God. Go to Nineveh. And he said, you know, I am not going. You can see, you can see me and see yourself. The way we live our lives, God will have mercy on us. So we need to choose the path that leads to our destination. Today, we all claim the blessings of Abraham simply because he obeyed God. Simply because he obeyed God. What are you doing with God's instruction? When you choose the right path, there are benefits for it. The benefit of choosing right. Number one, you will become a friend of God. God is our father. You know that even with kids, the one that really readily obey, you know, you are pleased with that child. It doesn't give you stress, doesn't give you trouble. Do this, it will do it. You are pleased with that person. And the same way, when we obey God, God is pleased with us. God was pleased with Abraham. And that is why he said, can I hide this thing from Abraham, my friend? Because I know. Can God say the same thing about you? That God knows, can I give this instruction? Can I, com can I, com can I, can I rest and com commit this thing into your end? Because I know. You will do. Genesis chapter 18, 17 to 19. You will have access to the secret of God. Psalm 25, verse 14. When God, when you obey God, when you choose the right path, the Bible says the secret of God is with them that fears Him. You will have the access to the secret of God. Because you've chosen the right path. You've chosen to do those things that are pleasing to God. God will not hide anything from you. And you will not go astray. Number three. Psalm 32 verse 8. It says, I will guide you along the best path for your life. God will guide you along the best path. Because you, you, he knows that you will obey. Is it in career? Is it in business? Because there are so many options. You don't know what, what you don't know which one to choose. And God says, I will lead you and I will lead you in the best path. Only God knows the best path, you know. And once you obey God, once you choose that right path, God says, He will lead you and He will guide you along that path. You will enjoy the peace of God. Isaiah 26 verse 3 it says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind stayed on you because he trusted in you if you don't choose the right path there is no way you can enjoy God's peace no do not try, do not try to go and sleep even in the ship but the storm will not allow him they have to wake him up. So this morning, the Spirit of God is saying to somebody, choose the right path. Begin to look at your life. Which path have you been walking since the beginning of the year? There is always a second chance. 
there is always a place to turn around and begin to do the right thing. Number five, benefit of choosing the right path. You shall not want because God becomes your shepherd and you are the sheep. David said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. If the Lord is your shepherd, there is no way you can want. Because it will lead you in the path you should go. You will not need to wander around. You will not need, you will not need, you will not need to live your life by trial and error. Because God is the one that is leading you. Because he says, I know the thought that I have towards you, Jeremiah 29, 11. They are the power, they are the, they are the plan of peace and not of evil to give you the expected end. So if you choose the right path, you will end up in your destination. You will end up where you want to go. So it is crucial as a child of God to choose the right path in which area of your life are you not choosing the right path as I said we choose paths every day so many ways in relationship we choose paths in career we choose paths it is very important Psalm 25 verse 4 says Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road to me. Point out the road for me to follow. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to choose right, walk right, and live right. I take it again. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to choose right, walk right, and live right. Because there is a way that seems right to a man. The end thereof is destruction. May we never be destroyed in Jesus' name. Amen. We need to let go and let go. And finally, how do you know as a child of God if you are choosing the wrong path? Number one, if you can afford not to read your Bible every day and meditate on the word. First day, you are busy, you rush to work. Second day, you are busy, you rush to work. You come in the evening, too tired, and you slept off. You are choosing the wrong path already. You need to watch out. You cannot pray. You can have time for every other thing, but for prayer, you manage five minutes, it is on your bed as you lie down. Before you know it, two minutes, you slept off. It's a wrong path. You need to wake up. Wrong company. All these things, they will make it easy for you to walk in the flesh. When you keep wrong company, you are choosing the wrong path. Where they will sit down to gossip, to talk ill about the things of God, to talk heresy and all those kinds, you are choosing the wrong path. When you, when you find it convenient to neglect the assembly of believers for whatever reason, you have chosen the wrong path. When sin becomes a casual thing, I'll do it and I confess. It doesn't really matter. God is merciful. I will do it and I confess. I do it and I confess. You've chosen the wrong path. When you, when you don't hear God as you used to do, when you think that God is not speaking to you, you need to run to God. You have chosen the wrong path. You have chosen the wrong path. And the list goes on and on. When, it is, when we begin to look at the practicality of these things, because for example, if you, have, if, you, if you find it comfortable and convenient to keep malice, there's no way you can be reading your Bible every day and be praying every day that you will find it convenient to do that. But if you don't read your Bible two, three days and you don't pray as you ought to pray, you, you won't say anything about it in my list. You will just be justifying yourself. She did this, so I did this. She did that, so I did this. 
So all these things that we mention, they have a way of playing out in our practical life every day every day and that is why our christian life is about the way we live our life every day when we read the scripture we we, we lived it out and that is and that is what it meant to be live right you just right you walk right and you live right without the spirit of god you cannot do so this morning be doers of the world, says the Spirit of the Lord from the book of James chapter 22. Don't be hearers alone. Don't deceive yourself. There is no way. God is not mocked. You cannot be saying, I fear God and be walking in the wrong direction. Chapter 23 is about to be heavy low. What we have left is not as much as what we have spent. Where are you? In your journey to eternity where are you in your Christian journey where are you concerning your aspiration at the beginning of the year it's not about spiritual things alone as I said but your spiritual state dictates your physical state even when it seems like at the beginning of the year I have Aspiration A, B, C, D, E. We have few days to go. Aspiration A and B has been fulfilled. C and D is yet to be fulfilled. And anxiety set in. Worry wants to set in. If you choose right and you read in your Bible, that anxiety will not take root. That worriness will not take root. You will know that though they are not being fulfilled, God is not slack concerning his promises. You will know that whatever he says he will do, he will do. You will know that you have a burden bearer in Christ. You will know that his it, it, thought towards you is of peace. You will know that you will keep your mind in perfect peace. So the enemy will not be able to oppress you. Choosing right. Choosing right. Walking right. And living right. Let's rise up. I want you to talk to the Lord this morning. As you look at yourself in the mirror of the world, what kind of choices do you make every day? What do you do? Those are the questions for you to answer by yourself and begin to talk to God. What do you do with the instruction of God to you? Since the beginning of the year, do you walk towards your Nineveh or you headed towards Tashish? Begin to pray this morning in whatever area that you need the grace of God. Begin to ask for that grace to choose right every day from the little things to take right decision to walk in the right direction to obey God to trust God to live for God to do things that pleases Him Lord, I need your grace Every one of us will struggle in one area or the other. I don't know about you, but I know that I struggle. I know so many areas of my struggle. And I keep asking God, Lord, I need your grace. I don't want to continue like this. I don't want to be rising up and falling down. That is not my experience. That, should, that, does, that is not what I want, oh God. I want to be able to stand and stand firm. Lord, I need your grace. A life of obedience. Everything that, that makes me to tend towards Tashi. Lord, separate me from them. Begin to pray for yourself. Separate me from them. Be the business of life. Be it the past experiences. Whatever it is, oh God. Uproot it from my life. And help me to be 
able to take the right decision. Pray that prayer according to Psalm 25 verse 4. That Lord, show me the right path. Point out the road for me to follow. And grant me the grace to follow it. On daily basis. It doesn't matter what is going on around my life. Be the epicenter of my life. It doesn't matter what my experiences are. Lord, show me the path of life and help me to be able to follow. This is my desire this morning. Lord, please help me. Please help me. You need another chance this morning. That is another chance for you. God is God of many chances, many opportunities. That area where you need that restoration, God is here to restore you. If only you will cry to God. The way Jonah cried to God and say, Father, please give me another chance. Send me and I will go. Lord, help me. In that area where you need that chance again, ask God and receive it by faith. Where you need restoration, ask God and receive it by faith. God is here to manifest His power over your situation and your circumstances and begin to receive of the Lord this morning in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. If you have not given your life to Jesus at any time, there is no way you can choose right. You may think that you are doing good and you will have reward for your good but the main thing is the relationship that gives God the platform to be the shepherd of your soul to lead you and to direct you you need to do that you need to do that if you don't do that you will find it convenient to choose the wrong path from time to time if you need to give your life to Jesus this morning, just pray the prayer of salvation and acknowledge your wrongdoing before God. Acknowledge that you are a sinner, that Jesus came for you, he died for you, he shed his blood for you. And confess all your sin, ask him to have mercy upon you and ask him to come into your life and be the Lord and the Savior. That has from today, Lord, you are the Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of my life. Take control and let me be able to walk with you and walk with me and lead me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake that I will please you and honor you and glorify you in all that I do. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Lord, this morning, I ask for everyone under the sound of my voice that, Lord, your grace will be released for second chances, oh God, for restoration, oh God, for grace to choose right every time, for grace to bless you, for grace to honor you, for grace to glorify you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And Lord, as we do, the blessing, oh God, of choosing right, let it rest upon our lives, oh God, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. And Lord, for every aspiration and desire of our heart, Lord, the scripture says you make everything beautiful, even in their time. Lord, you will cause our joy to be full, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, and our life will give you glory. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's rise. To the service to a close, let's just leave our voices unto the Lord this morning and begin to bless Him, God of all grace. Let's appreciate Him, let's honor Him. He's worthy, He's worthy, He's worthy. The scriptures say, well, What is man? What who is me that you are mindful of me? Who are we that God is mindful of us? He has chose to. And we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you. He has committed himself unto us. 
to keep us in all our ways. Let's say, Father, thank you. Lord, we bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You are a good God. Let's begin to commit the weak into the hand of the Lord. Father, we acknowledge that without you we can do nothing. You are the strength of our lives. So, Lord, we put our hands into your hands this week. That you will lead us even into this week. That we will build the edges of fire round about us. That no evil will be able to penetrate into our lives. As we pray for ourselves, we use ourselves as a point of contact for our families and our loved ones. That in the name of the Lord Jesus, the divine protection of the Almighty will be upon our lives, will be upon our homes. That the eyes of the Lord will watch over us. It will keep us in all our ways. We will not dash our foot against any stone. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that every evil that is in this week, we will be spared from it in the name of Jesus. That every benefit that you have loaded into this week will take delivery in the name of Jesus. Lord, we cover every one of us and our loved ones, everyone that is named after this assembly. We cover with the precious blood of Jesus. That this blood will speak for us in the name of Jesus. And indeed, it shall be well with us in Jesus' name. Lord, we go into this week, O oh God. We pray that you will shepherd us. You will guide us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You will help us in every decision that we will take. That we will choose right in the name of Jesus. Father, we say thank you. Lord, we pray for this nation. That Lord, you will take the cloud of confusion away from this nation in the name of Jesus. You will help the leaders to know what to do. To choose right and to be able to do it right in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for the nation of Israel, that Lord, you will fight for your people. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. We pray for the entire what we do East, that you will cause peace to return. You will cause war to cease. In the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for Ukraine and everywhere there are wars. Lord, we pray that let your mercy prevail and put end to the loss of lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. Thank you, everlasting Father. When we will come back next week, oh God, cause us to be full of joy again. Blessed be your name forevermore. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. So may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all and forevermore. Let's share the goodness together. So goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you and have a great week.